With deep appreciation and gratitude, I wish to express my sincerest thanks to the DHL Courier for delivering my package in the record time of only 8 days past the due date. It's truly impressive how carefully they can adapt to unusual circumstances, affording me extra time for contemplation and hopeful anticipation. I would also like to express my appreciation for the Courier's creative approach to packaging my shipment. The box, which I joyfully received, was a true work of art. Each dent and hole seemed meticulously planned, adding a unique character that would surely stand out among ordinary undamaged packages. I am also immensely grateful that DHL allowed me to experience the thrill associated with the uncertainty of the condition of my package's contents. Unpacking from such surprisingly redesigned packaging is truly an adventure. Without a doubt, I will long remember this delivery as a unique experience that only strengthened my patience and ability to appreciate the small, unexpected surprises in life. Thank you, DHL, for these priceless lessons! In this episode, I will not focus on any parameters or praising the product. Instead, I will focus on the flaws that are annoying and result not from manufacturing errors, but from laziness and sloppiness, lack of quality control in the factory, which they have only heard of from legends and stories. This is a typical construction saw, so I don't expect CNC-like precision. The company doesn't even try to correct the errors that people have been showing on YouTube for many years. The model that reached me has a warped table at the front. It's slightly bent downwards, so it's not perfectly flat. I know this even happens in branded saws. Another example of negligence is that the screws are not matched to the components. They have to be hammered in by force, and care must be taken not to bend the tube. The holes in the tubes are too small. Overall, the cart is very stable and functional once assembled. The saw can be easily moved to another location, folded up, and it takes up little space. I like that, especially since I don't have much room in the garage. In the box, we have a user manual. As for the assembly description of the cart, the pictures are so small that it's practically impossible to make out anything, as everything is blurred. You can only generally see how to connect the elements. However, the descriptions of these elements and the screws are unreadable in the drawing. The wheels seem sturdy, made of hard plastic. The black parts are made of flexible plastic. It's okay. Miter gauge? Well, there's no possibility to adjust the play. Cheap plastic, huge gaps, it's completely unusable with this saw. But I will use it in another project. For this saw, I will use a different miter gauge with play adjustment. Push stick. Made of cheap plastic. It goes straight to the trash. Do not use plastic push sticks. Instead, make your own out of wood. How dangerous is it? You can find out on the internet. I won't be posting pictures here. Generally, this plastic behaves like glass. Upon contact with the blade, it creates many sharp shards. You can guess the rest. A major advantage is the cast aluminum table ribbed, thickness 3 mm. But as I mentioned earlier, it is warped in my unit. The knob is made of cheap plastic, everything moves. When you press the wheel, there is a gear for setting the angle. It is very poorly made. A big plus is that the saw has a break and stops very quickly. Unfortunately, it does not have a soft start. The rip fence is made of thin aluminum sheet. It is very light, but stable once locked. However, it could have been made better. Unfortunately, the lock of this fence is very poorly assembled. Thin bent sheets, cheap plastic. The locking handle sticks out to the side and deflects the material away from the fence. T-slot. Both slots have completely different widths, which means that a fence adjusted in one slot requires recalibration of the clearance when moved to the other. The left slot has a width of 19.24 millimeters and the other is 18.9 millimeters. The saw has both upper and lower dust extraction. The extraction casing is made of plastic and everything moves. 
When we grab the extraction, the saw blade moves sideways. I will leave that without comment. The saw has an adjustment at the back for tilting the blade away from the fence, which can be adjusted by loosening two screws. In summary, is it worth buying this saw? If you need a saw for professional use, no. If you don't like or can't correct manufacturer's defects and don't have the time, and you want a ready and working product, no. If you are an amateur like me and correcting these issues is not a problem for you, I think it's worth it. Especially since for this price, you will not find a better saw for amateur use. A huge advantage at this price is the table. Although mine was slightly warped, after testing, I did not notice any impact on the quality of the cut. The saw, after calibration, cuts straight, and the angles are also maintained. After eliminating the defects, the saw works very well. It is also worth noting the very good contact with Vever support. They respond very quickly and several issues were resolved promptly. In the next video, I will focus on upgrading this saw. Thank you for watching.